What is going on YouTube Nation? This is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos. Huge news with TSLY ETF. This was big news. And a lot of people that were critics towards this ETF, they don't they kind of look foolish right now. But again, TSLY, as I said before, ETF is a ETF that is not going to beat the S P. It is not shares of TSLY. I'll go over that to, for a lot of you guys that are new. But I'm going to explain to you my potential plans. And the big news really attracted me to potentially start this strategy. I'm going to explain it to you. And actually, it's going to uh, integrate my M1 Finance dividend portfolio and E-Trade dividend portfolio. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos. Smash that like button. Let's check this ETF out right now. So the Yield Max TSLY Option Income Strategy ETF is a very unique ETF. Sitting at 1709. Now it's not going to beat the S&P 500. It's not going to beat Tesla. So don't even expect them to beat Tesla price per share wise or when it comes to capital appreciation and stuff don't expect that to beat the s p or tesla it's just not going to happen but you have to understand these guys and this is one thing about these guys that still has me very attracted to these guys and as of next month i'm going to reveal to you their announcement with their dividend okay their announcement what I plan on doing if it's a one that is attractive enough the next month if it's attractive enough for me as a dividend investor to implement this in a dividend investing strategy so let's check these guys out so I'm on their website the yield max TSLA option income strategy ETF so it's an actively management fund that seeks to generate monthly income by selling writing call options on TSLY. TSLY pursued as a strategy that aims to harvest compelling yields while retaining capped participation in the price gains of Tesla or TSLA. So the distribution rate is the annual yield an investor would receive the most recently declared distribution which includes option income remain the same going forward. The distribution rate is calculated by multiplying the ETF's distribution per share by 12 and dividing the resulting amount of the ETF's most recent net asset value, or NAV. The distribution rate represents a single distribution from the ETF and does not represent its total return. The 30-day SEC yield represents a net investment income which excludes option income earned by such ETF over the 30-day period it was ended in 630 2023 expressed as an annual percentage rate based on the ETF share price at the end of the 30-day period now again the expense ratio is a lot all yield max ETFs have a gross expense ratio of 0.99 percent so I want to go over this real quick again with their portfolio. This is the big thing that was huge. This is the biggest distribution per share that they've ever declared. One month they were 44 cents. They took a hit. The other months they've been 90, 90, 99 cents, 82 cents, 80 cents. And this 106 is, whoa. So here's the thing with these guys. First, I'm going to go over this. So again, their top 10 holdings, there is no Tesla. These are these call option things. And the Treasury right here. So they have a call option 723 right here. You don't see any shares of Tesla. So I just want to 
make it clear this is not shares of Tesla. Now, the thing is, I'm going to jump to E-Trade first and discuss if this lands another high distribution per share, what I plan on doing. So I'm going to jump to E-Trade first. So right here on my E-Trade dividend portfolio, I right now have 174.788 shares. So the rate is 106, and the estimated income is 186.34. That's from the recent announcement. I want to be, okay, my strategy with these guys is to get enough, if things look good, I will go in, I will pick up shifts, I will throw in money to load this up. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I will pick up an eight-hour shift and get my overtime pay and turbocharge this ETF because my strategy is to have right around $600, hopefully consistent, $600, $700 consistently to buy KLIP. And then it looks like APLY is not doing too hot completely but again i want consistent income to start buying shares like franklin resources i at least want to get four or five or six of these okay if i can get to 600 so what i would do is use the income of this one to start loading up aply or something this is getting me around a dollar. When I do that, then I start buying more of these. Then I start getting up to 1200 possibly. Now, again, the problem is this expense ratio is terrible, and this is not a long-term thing because what, I, what I'm saying by that is you got inconsistency. You got an expense ratio that's bad. I'm going to use this income, okay, this consistent, or hopefully 600 to 700 income, to buy my dividend growth stocks. I, this is not, I, I'm not giving financial advice, but I need something to park some money to, so that I can start buying other dividend stocks. Now, I can do options trading. That's one thing that I have in mind with some of my um, high yield dividend stocks to kind of turbocharge that. I I mean Arbor is more reliable, and again, you know some of these dividend growth stocks. You know the way they stock split and everything. You know you get eighty cents consistently a month, but a lot of the dividend growth stocks can top that over time, fifteen twenty years. You have to think about long term. I'm going to use the income, and I'm going to jump to. Um, M1 Finance, because this is what I may do on M1 Finance if I like the way things are going, to implement TSLY and hopefully KLIP, if KLIP gets on M1 Finance. I'm going to show you what I plan on doing on M1 Finance. So right now in M1 Finance, my dividend portfolio is at $66,151.56. So what I would have to do, I'm looking at some of these. I have an income firepower thing. I moved ARC into here and a few things. Have energy stocks. You know, I, I got to change that percentage eventually. I loaded up a lot of energy stocks and put it in there because that's not my focus right now. That'll change, though. But the thing is, with these dividend stocks, I would have to change a distribution on some of these to implement TSLY in here. And I'm loading up in financial sector stocks. As you can tell, my most recent thing with dividends, I earn, let's see, I'll just show you my activity. Dividends right there. So I earn uh, Wiki Properties, I made 1896, and Getty Realty Group, 648 which bought me right here, a total of 47.18, Fifth Third Bank, Bank, OZK, and Kinder Morgan. 
So what I would have to do is change a percentage on some of these dividend stocks. And by the way, Bank of America, I'm pretty sure just hiked their dividend. What I would do is first focus on E-Trade to really load up that portfolio. I'm still going to dollar cost average on M1 Finance, but it's going to get to the point where I don't want to put any more money in M1 Finance and just let the dividends do the talking. And by parking my money into TSLY ETF and some of these other ones, if they're effective and efficient, that would be huge. So my thought process is with these, and again, this is a risk. I'm still buying you know, the real estate sector and financial sector for a while. But if TSLY and KLIP look really good, because somebody messaged me or posted that TSLY and KLIP have a different week schedule. So these you know, um, option ETFs can implement in there so that they can start buying these stocks, dividend growth stocks. The long-term goal is this section in the dividend growth section, I wanna start using these dividends to buy these because I'm not completely relying on TSLY ETF for income, consistent income for retirement. I'm using their income to buy other dividend stocks. That's the only way I see these guys is effective and efficient is using their income. You load up, use their income to buy other stuff like Regions Financial, uh, Jackson Financial. Because the long term, you just sit at a dollar, okay, let's just say every month. Some of these guys can pass you up, you know, with quarterly uh, and then they stock split and stuff. Um, really good example would probably be Starbucks 15, 20 years from now that their dividend will actually probably, I mean, just to say theoretically and in theory pass up that income and then you get J.P. Morgan who hikes their dividend. Hopefully there's stock splits with a lot of these guys. I mean, the goal is a lot of these dividend growth stocks that are keeping up with the S&P or beating the S&P, like Starbucks, um, Goldman Sachs, BlackRock. I mean, gosh, there's so many that are really good. Um, United Healthcare, that eventually they split their stock and then their dividend ends up catching up or beating these yield max ETFs, which is highly possible. Their dividend growth and rich tradition. And again, dividend investing is long-term. Short-term satisfaction with these covered call ETFs is not completely the answer. Dividend investing, you like to compound interest. You like the dividend snowball effect to kick in. And these cover, you know, this yield max ETFs provide an opportunity for people to just park their money in and buy shares in M1 Finance. So I'm just telling you my strategy that I'm looking at. This is my yield max ETF strategy because I don't want to use just, I don't want to just completely rely on their income. It goes 80 cents, 106. I want consistency. But if I use its income to buy other dividend growth stocks, like uh, let's just say Bank of America that's sitting at, I mean, imagine if I can use that income with TSLY, APLY, all that, make a thousand dollars a month in them then throw it in you know Bank of America for um, three months and just turbocharge that that's what I want to do long term telling you I, I I'm gonna tell you you're crazy if you're just gonna rely on TSLY for this income you know um, instant gratification this is you should not use these ETFs as gratification you should use it for discipline you should I mean, this is what I'm doing. It, you should. I'm doing it for stuff that buys other dividend growth stocks. So I'm not giving financial advice. I'm going to jump to my disclaimer. But again, I'm not telling you what to buy. I'm not telling you um, what to trade or anything or 
or implement this dividend investing strategy. I'm just telling you from entertainment purposes what I'm doing. I'm showing you my dividend investing journey and my dividend investing strategies. And these videos are free for you guys. So that's benefits of being a subscriber and hitting the notification bell. So I just want to make this clear before I jump to my disclaimer. And I'm going to sum this up TSLY. When it comes to income, it, my, making money, instant gratification is not a good thing. Gunslinging, you know, with day trading and all that. People go crazy, emotions. You cannot let the emotions control you with TSLY or these yield max ETFs. Sure, it's great. I got a lot of DMs. Oh, man, man, this is, this is bomb. This is it. This is, the, this is the ultimate. No, it's not. It is something that I am using to buy other dividend growth stocks and reputable dividend stocks. It's the only thing I'm going to be planning on doing with these guys in the long run. I would rather throw this income in O or throw in Agree Realty Corporation or something like that that brings value that I can trust. This is something that it can really, if you're chasing yield, you're crazy. Don't chase yield. The only way to do strategy, okay, is to use your emotions and use, and um, excuse me, not use your emotions and use logic to strategize a dividend investing strategy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been rambling a lot, but I just want to go over this with TSLY, my thought process, E-Trade and M1 Finance. If you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. You guys have a great weekend. Take care. So as a reminder, this is a disclaimer notice. This is not financial advice for entertainment purposes, only disclaimer in the description. Always consult with a financial advisor regarding financial advice. I do not give financial advice. I will tell you I do not give financial advice. There's always a risk regarding investing and you can lose a lot of money. My channel is for entertainment purposes only, and I reveal to you my dividend investing journey. Do not take this with any form of financial advice in these videos. I hope you enjoy my video, and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Thank you so much for watching this.